September 21st regular scheduled board meeting to session. Um, Tammy, please let the record show that all board members are in attendance. And Stephen, I believe you have a couple of our first items of business. We do. Good evening to all of you. Tonight we have with us three students from Wilson's Creek Intermediate School who will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> it just so happens that they are joining us on the same day that the U.S. Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona, announced that Wilson's Creek is one of only 325 schools across this country named a National Blue Ribbon School for 2021. recall in August Wilson's Creek was recognized by the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education as one of eight Missouri Gold Star schools. So these recognitions back to back highlight the outstanding teaching and learning that is happening at Wilson's Creek and we uh, congratulate the entire team. U.S. Department of Education will recognize National Blue Ribbon Schools during an awards ceremony in November. We offer our congratulations and we'll have more to come uh, when that announcement gets a little bit closer. Now allow me to introduce you to those three student representatives from Wilson's Creek. They were selected because they regularly demonstrate pride behavior. And that means they are prepared, respectful, involved, determined, and empathetic. So if we could have our Wilson's Creek team come forward, I'm going to talk a little bit about each of you. And uh, your principal, Dr. Christie, said these nice things about you. So that is who is responsible for this. Aubrey Whitson, Aubrey, would you raise your hand? Feel free to face the board if you'd like. They're going to want to see your faces, and uh, you'll lead the pledge. So Aubrey, demonstrate Wilson's Creek pride by actively participating in learning. Dr. Christie says she is respectful and kind to everyone. She actively seeks to include her classmates and shows determination in her work and other efforts. Brindle Romine. Brindle? Brindle demonstrates Wilson's Creek pride with her outgoing and her positive attitude. She is empathetic and in tune with the needs of her classmates. Brindle always strives to advocate for others and includes them. <laughs> Finally, we have Brenna Taylor. Brenna, can you raise your hand? Brenna demonstrates Wilson's Creek pride with her determination to work with her classmates and be a positive member of her team. She is a ray of sunshine, as you can see. She greets her teachers and classmates with a cheerful hello and smile each day. She makes the creek a better place to learn. I know there are Wilson's Creek staff and family members of the great students that are with us. Thank you all for being here and all you do to support our students. And now we will ask Aubrey, Brindle, and Brenna to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. As soon as you're ready, for those who are able to stand, please join us whenever you're ready, students. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Students, if you hold on, I've got these certificates for you. And if Dr. Lathan and Dr. Leonard would come forward, we'll get a photo with these students. We've got Brenna. Mask games. Now we'll continue with our honoring excellence for this evening, and we begin with a special recognition for staff members who will celebrate their 25 and 30 year service anniversaries during this school year. This year we have 37 SPS employees who will be celebrating these significant milestones. Between now and November, we are inviting these special employees to join us so that we may recognize their dedication to our district and to our students. With us this evening are four employees who are commemorating their years of service. Our first employee, please come forward when I call your name, is Jean Graybill, Director of Health Services. Jean has achieved 30 years of service with Springfield Public Schools. Thank you. 
Next, we have three employees who are celebrating 25 years of service with the district. Dr. Janelle Bagwell, principal at Field Elementary School, Jenny Cummins, a teacher at Central High School, and Brian McHaney, a paraprofessional at Delaware Elementary School. Let's join us one more time in thanking Jean, Janelle, Jimmy, and Ryan. And now we're excited to uh, celebrate with you our first Keep On Growing recognition of the school year. Our theme, as you know, this year is Keep On Growing. Many of you remember that we kicked off the school year with a special video that highlighted our students and staff while introducing the theme. We will be encouraging our leadership team this year to support our employee recognition program by honoring individuals who are putting into practice the five focus areas of our strategic plan. Each month, they will present lanyard pins to spontaneously recognize staff who demonstrate efforts to keep on growing in the areas of our strategic plan. We have also asked that they select one person each month and submit them for district level recognition. We celebrate these honorees on district social media accounts and another way we highlight employee contributions is through a monthly video presentation at our regular school board meeting. Our first video shares the story of Jane Frank, who demonstrates why it is important to keep on growing. I am Jane Frank, and I drive a school bus for SBS. 30 years of safe driving, driving that just doesn't, doesn't happen by, by accident. It, it takes being intentional. Jane just takes tremendous pride in her job. She loves what she does. It can be easy to get complacent after 30 years, but not Jane. Jane is always working to keep on growing. Best compliment I ever got was I had a Christmas card sent to me by a parent one day that said, I don't worry. The minute they hand me the bus. That's the best compliment I've ever had. That's all we do. It's how we're trained. I think she was just meant to be a bus driver. She's passionate about it. She loves it. This is a huge vehicle. And we go through tight areas, accident free for 30 years. Now, I don't know how many people said you could retire. Okay, sure. But I'm not ready to. I'm enjoying this. I like my job. I love these kids. She has a wall of fame on her bus. She celebrates birthdays. She makes the bus feel like it's family. And the kids respond to that. And they remember her long after they have gone off to other schools or even graduated the district. I had a young man send me a picture from Afghanistan because he found out about the wall. And he found me through my son's Facebook. And he said, I heard about your wall. Why am I not on it? I'm like, oh, you baby, send me a picture. I'll put you on it. So he did. I thought that was kind of cool. It wasn't that long ago that Simple Press students worked to put a piece together for HTV Buzz where they were looking back on the time that they rode her bus and her decades of safe driving. She's, just, she's amazing at what she does and she's always willing to help other drivers.
Mrs. Frank, if you would please come forward so we may present you with a Keep On Growing Lanyard pen. Awesome. Mrs. Frank is just one example of the many keep on growing stories that we will be sharing throughout our district. As we move forward into October, we encourage uh, the public to search Grow with SPS on Twitter to see others who are being recognized. And that concludes honoring excellence for this evening. Thank you all. Thank you, Stephen. And it's nice to be back in the regular school year to be able to do these recognitions and celebrate our um, students and our staff as well. So thank you for that. Our uh, next agenda item is the approval of the agenda. I received no suggestions for agenda items to be added prior to this agenda being set. So the recommended action is that the board approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Sharita will make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Scott will second it. Any discussion? Okay, seeing and hearing none, we are ready to vote. motion passes. Our next agenda item are our consent agenda and we had that presented to us at our last study session. Oh, I am so sorry. Thank you, Tammy. I was excited about our recognitions. Moving on. Okay, I will read our prompt for our public comments. Sorry, my computer is just a little bit slow. Here we go. The Board of Education wel welcomes comments about issues being discussed. The Board uses this time in our meeting to listen to the public but will not comment or engage with the public during this meeting. The Board allows for up to 10 speakers per co public comment period. The Board Chair will call in individuals in the order in which they signed up. Substitutions are not permitted. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes and will be timed by the Board Secretary. Comments must be acceptable for a business and family friendly environment. Inappropriate language, gestures, or personal attacks will not be tolerated. It is inappropriate to address the board about individual students or individual staff members by name in open meeting. If you have concerns about individuals, these concerns should be addressed through the appropriate administrative supervisors, either in the schools or in the district office. If you have materials that you want to share, please provide them to the officer prior to speaking and they will be distributed to board members. Our first public speaker is Phil Snyder. Welcome. Good evening, Phil. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm the Reverend Dr. Phil Snyder. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to visit with you all this evening. Uh, I'm a proud graduate of Horseman Elementary, <laughs> Pershing, then um, junior high, <laughs> and Kickapoo High School, class of 92, where coincidentally and serendipitously, I graduated with Brian McCain, who was just on it. <laughs> um, and all three of my children, two uh, of whom are still in SPS, went to Wilson's Creek. Um, and my wife actually taught, uh, coincidentally, with Brian at Delaware. She now teaches at Fremont. So I'm really glad that this is the night I chose yeah. to come and address the board. Um, I speak tonight as both a parent and a pastor. Um, I'd just like to begin by expressing my sincere personal appreciation to Dr. Sharita Thomas-Tate. Um, for your tireless commitment to the students of Springfield Public Schools. Uh, I've been a pastor at Brentwood for nearly 20 years. I don't know where the time goes. Um, I had a chance to meet Dr. Thomas Tate soon after she moved to Springfield. And it was not long until you had inspired members from my congregation uh, to work with you uh, on the Ujima uh, Children's Literacy Project. 
uh, which you started out of uh, your close commitments to the Bartley Decatur Neighborhood Center. I know you've worked with uh, members of my church uh, on book drives, on supply drives for back to school, and have been very inspirational and have helped us find real ways to connect in ways that we can improve uh, the education of students here in Springfield. So I just wanted to um, publicly say thank you. Um, over the years, I've seen lots of leaders come and go, whether it be school board, city council, different you know, community advocacy organizations, yet no one has remained more steadfast and the commitment to improving the lives of students and supporting their education and Dr. Sharita Thomas-Tate. So uh, I just want to publicly say on the record, thank you for all the tireless work you do behind the scenes. Uh, nobody champions children's education more than you, as anyone who knows you can well attest, and we are so very grateful for you, so thank you. Um, I also want to express my appreciation SPS's commitment to valuing the integrity and dignity of all students, including LGBTQ students. I'm a pastor. I know these are sensitive issues. Uh, I know that there are a lot of people who believe different things and feel different things. But people of faith across all religious traditions, and people of good faith who may not necessarily identify as religious, can agree on the value of treating every student with dignity, integrity, and respect. Um, and, and this has been a learning curve for me. I'm an adjunct professor. Uh, I was encouraged by a trusted um, professor years ago to use pronouns on my syllabus. I didn't understand why. Uh, but I, 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 this professor explained to me how it can help LGBTQ persons feel safe, uh, feel like they belong. And after class one day, um, whenever the sem semester had first started, you, a student came up to me and told me that thing, that very thing. And if we can make people belong and feel safe, it increases everyone's success in the classroom. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Our next public speaker is Greg Kogasek. Did I butcher that? Can you, can you say it correctly? Yes. My name is Greg Bukovats. Okay, I was close. Welcome, Greg. Good evening. Two weekends ago, I watched four SPS middle school football programs struggle to stay hydrated as their players wore out from the intense afternoon heat. Due to the district's limitless desire to screw with the psyche of our children through the onslaught of obtuse and reckless decisions prompted by COVID, players were taking it upon themselves to solve the water shortage crisis by sharing water bottles. So I took it upon myself to address this problem. I recorded an impassioned and personal plea to the board and district to fix the problem immediately. I posted that video online and submitted it to the board that Saturday night. By 8.05 Monday morning, the wheels of change had already begun to move and the policy was changed. And I'd like to publicly extend gratitude to the district athletic director for taking a bad decision made in whole by the district and by proxy for the board and making a good decision to hydrate our middle school athletes. I have many concerns tonight. I am concerned that by all appearances, your solution to be more available to the public with this new email address is not actually a tool to create openness, rather a tool for the district to solve or divert problems before they reach your inbox. I am concerned that the board hired or possibly was influenced to hire an, in, an individual for superintendent with such a rough track record in the districts that she served in before SPS. I am concerned that the public hears more about equity and diversity than we do about setting higher standards for increasing test scores amongst all students and a more rigorous curriculum. I am concerned that the nation's largest teachers union intimidated the CDC and influenced them to reverse updated masking policies and this did, district did not have the brains to see that and challenge the politically charged narrative. Due to our superintendent's desire to continue a masking mandate, you're out of line and not following our protocol. Okay? We, we don't talk about any personnel issues in public speaking, in our public comments period. Okay. Yep. I couldn't be more ecstatic that our state attorney general has filed a class, law, class action lawsuit which targets our school district and each of you as board members. Finally, I'm concerned that you as a board have castrated your collective decision-making ability and willingly passed it off to the another position, thereby relegating the board to a proverbial dog without teeth, in which case this has truly become an example of the tail wagging the dog. Finally, I want to address the general public, parents of students and students themselves. If there's one thing that you've learned through this 18 months, it's that the winds of change are blowing wildly in all directions. 
There is a silent majority here. It is time to stop being afraid and tell the district what you want. Record yourself on video showing the district how their backward policies affect your family on a daily basis. Video marketing has an extremely high conversion rate. Emotion influences change. And if you want change, show the board and district by sending them examples of what needs to change. Thank you. Our next public speaker is Christopher Moorhead. Good evening, Hi. Christopher. Hi, welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Christopher Moorhead. I'm a French teacher at Pippi Middle School. And I'm here today on behalf of SPS World Language Teachers, advocating for an expansion of our elementary language programs and a reinstatement of our middle school language programs. Our mission, as you know, at Springfield Public Schools is to prepare all students for tomorrow by providing engaging, relevant, and personalized education experiences today. World languages play a key role in carrying out this mission, particularly on an economic perspective. Uh, more than 6,000 Missouri companies conduct business in over 200 countries worldwide. Missouri exports over $24 billion in goods and services annually. And our largest trade partners are Canada and Mexico. Those are places where over 140 million people speak languages other than English. Languages are important to the economic stability of our local and state economy. And a survey from 2019 surveyed 1,200 U.S. companies and found that employers want employees with language skills. Nine out of ten of those employers rely on employees with language skills other than English. 56% of those that responded to the survey expect a demand for people with language skills to increase in the next five years. One in three language-dependent U.S. employers report a language skill gap. And one in four U.S. employers report losing business due to a lack of language skills. But it's simply, languages are good for business and for Springfield public schools. This makes world languages a necessity rather than a luxury for SPS students. Expansion of language learning at the elementary level and at the middle school level must become an education priority for Springfield Public Schools today if we are to prepare our students to be globally competent tomorrow. It's time for us to make languages our business. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Christopher. That concludes our public speakers for this evening. And that takes us to our next agenda item, which is our con consent agenda. And we heard Dr. Mulford present that to us during our study session. He's already come to the podium for that. We've had time to ask our questions, and I know um, we have seen some of those responses. And so I'm going to go ahead and read that the recommended action is that the board approve consent agenda items 3.01 through 5.01. Somebody be willing to make that motion? Danielle will make the motion. Charles will second it. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, we are ready to vote. Motion passes. Our next agenda item is our treasurer's report, and that will bring Dr. Mulford up to the podium. Good evening, Dr. Mulford. Good evening, board. I hope you're doing well tonight. So I'll be fairly brief in your board packet or several financial documents. Uh, a couple things I want to highlight. You'll notice that the uh, uh, budget amendment for this month reflects a decrease in local tax revenue. That's because of the tax levy we set last month and the, the uh, Franklin County decision that impacted our, our levy. And so with that, you'll also see an ending end of year projected fund balance decreasing by about 2%, roughly. Uh, that does not reflect any ESSER 3 dollars at this point in time. So keep that in mind. And while we're talking about ESSER 3, I also think it's important to note that while we have been given our amount that we will receive, the money itself has not been appropriated by the state legislature, and that won't happen until sometime in the spring. So we won't even really have access till the spring or later. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is our, our business office team is preparing for the financial statement audit that is required annually of all school districts. We'll be once again using Westbrook and Company, and they're going to start performing the audit the first part of October, and we anticipate having a full report to the board in December. That said, do you have any other questions about the Treasurer's report? 
Any questions for Dr. Mulford at this time? Okay, all right. Thank, so, you. thank you, Dr. Mulford. The recommended action is that the board approves the treasurer's report as presented. Make that motion. Denise will make that motion. Is there a second? Charles will second it. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, we're ready to vote. Motion passes. Our next agenda item is unfinished business. In both of these items, we already had the report at our study session, so there is no report, and we have time to we ask our questions during study session and also any questions um, within the last two weeks. So I'm just letting the public know that. So the recommended action for the local model compliance plan for special education is that the board approve the local model compliance plan for special education as was presented. Somebody willing to make that motion? I move. Sharita will make that motion. Is there a second? I second. Scott will second it. Any discussion? Seeing none, we are ready to vote. Motion passes. Our next agenda item is um, on medical stop loss coverage, and the recommended action is that the board approve the recommendation for stop loss coverage. Somebody willing to make that motion? Moved. Danielle will make the motion. Is there a second? Well, Scott's hand, maybe. Sure. Scott, Scott okay. with the second. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing and hearing none, we are ready to vote. Motion passes. Our next agenda item is bond project updates and actions, which brings Travis to the podium um, regarding change orders. Very small list for you this evening. Uh, it's just over $200,000. You'll see the large portion of that is continuing to uh, upgrade our phone systems throughout the district. We also have some uh, nutrition services, small wares for our kitchens at Boyd and Williams. Uh, those uh, inadvertently were left off a previous list, and so that's where your ratification is at because those are already in the buildings being used. So uh, you can see some additional ff &E for security cameras at Hillcrest uh, to continue uh, uh, bridging that gap within that project as well as for coverage and then a little bit of additional ff &E for uh, Williams in the preschool area. So if you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer those at this time. Any questions for Travis at this time? I, I reached out to Travis when he sent this to us, and I was curious. I know the phone system upgrade has been a debacle, <laughs> and you know, for many years, something that we knew needed to be addressed. And I just was curious as to he shared that this was represents 30 building upgrades for old or current buildings. The <coughs> new phone systems get upgraded with the new bond buildings, and that we have about 20 more to go within our district. Is that? Accurate. Right. With the, okay. the money that's been allotted out of this bond issue uh, will cover administrative offices that we've been doing as well as 30 school sites and then we'll then allot capital dollars after that time frame to continue and finish the rest of the 20. So it takes time to get them yes. all completed. Yes. Uh, and so once, once those dollars are finished, then we'll allot uh, capital expense to that. Yeah. But the good news is we're making progress. Right. Mm -hmm. Making progress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for answering that question. Yeah. Okay, the recommended action is that the board approve the change orders and agreements as presented. Is somebody willing to make that motion? Marianne will make the motion. Is there a second? Charles will second it. Oh, is there any discussion? Sorry. I got ready to vote. Seeing and hearing none, we're ready to vote. Motion passes. Thank you, Travis. Our next agenda item is report from administration, which is our superintendent's update. 
Good evening. Uh, as noted earlier by Mr. Hall, Wilson's Creek is one of eight schools in Missouri and 325 nationwide to be named a, nation, a National Blue Ribbon School for 2021. Congratulations again to Dr. Christie, the Wilson's Creek staff, and to our students and families. Ten of our SPS students representing Central, Glendale, and Parkview were named National Merit Scholarship semifinalists last week. So we're really excited and wishing uh, best wishes to those students as they complete the process and hopefully be a finalist. Tonight you're approved of MOU uh, board members with SPS and OTC uh, that will provide a student advisor on the campus at Hillcrest High School that will help our students prepare for both college and career opportunities. We are excited about this uh, additional support for our students. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Higman and his staff for their willingness to partner with us. And so more, and you're gonna hear more in the next year about some additional positions and support. Free flu clinics uh, will start next week. Our goal is to try to uh, get about 5,000 flu shots to students and also staff members. So please, we encourage everyone to take advantage of that. Also on October 5th at Parkview, we will host the district's annual uh, SBS College and Career Fair. And then last week, Dr. Mulford and I, and also our board president, had an opportunity to participate in the Chamber's community leadership visit. It was a busy three days, but very informative. And so I want to thank the Chamber and the board's support of our participation. Thank you. Okay. All right. That leads us to our next item of business, which is our Board of Education discussion. Any board comments at this time? I had a, Danielle. I did have a board comment. Um, as part of my law practice, I work with families who have children that have IEP meetings and 504 plan meetings, and you may all be aware there was recently a change in the state law um, so that parents and guardians are now expressly permitted to go ahead and record those 504 plan meetings or IEP meetings. And I just want to note that our board policy, and I don't think any state board policy has been updated yet to reflect that change, um, but I understand that the district is aware of that change. Um, I contacted MSBA. That policy recommendation is going to be coming down in October um, for us to review and make changes that are appropriate for our district. But I just wanted to make a comment that the board's aware of that, the district's aware of that, um, and I understand that we're still following uh, state law at this point in time. Yes, principals have been made aware uh, and that if a parent records, the district will also record and then we keep a copy of that with the student's file. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Also yeah. on the MSBA program, so the MSBA is going to breakfast meeting next Friday, October 1. Okay. Um, Can't so believe it's October. Yeah, It will be both live and virtual and the, the board of directors is grappling with many of the same issues that all of our district is grappling with. And a lot of that will um, go up in the program and in the business meeting at the MSBA Hall meeting. Which this year is moving away from uh, Margarita Bill slash Pantera <laughs> up in Kansas City. <laughs> Yes. Thank you, Charles. Yes. Thank you for that. Yes. Okay. All right. Our um, uh, we've got uh, got some of our upcoming meetings on the calendar here. Um, we received um, an invite today from the foundation, uh, the SPS Foundation. Their grant delivery day is this Friday. And at 8.30, they're going to give Dr. Lathan the, the big fancy check in, right here in Kraft. So if any board member wants to be a part of um, that presentation and picture, just let Tammy know and, and she'll make sure that you have um, the details on that. But grant delivery day for Foundation of SBS starts this Friday. The next, we have our study session and regular scheduled board meeting already on our calendar, October 5th, October 19th. And then October 20th and 21st is our SPS Hall of Fame reception and lunch in the following day. And I believe that this should be on, um, it gives you more details about that. And you can, again, let Tammy know if you are uh, planned to attend. And she may be reaching out to us to see if we plan to attend. Those are the, yeah, Denise. I want to back up. I don't want to be out of order here, but okay. I have one more comment <laughs> yeah. I wanted to yeah. um, And that is that. Um, at Pipkin, this I guess it was last week. They had uh, I had I got an opportunity to attend their conscious discipline training, oh, yes. and so I told them I would mention that. 
Um, it was an it is an excellent training, and it was for all the students and the staff. And I think there was um, an opportunity for um, everyone to have some of the conscious discipline training, although it's for the students. Uh, a couple of takeaways I I had from that is then they were talking to the students and the teachers and helping them to understand that what <clears throat> might be normal everyday conversation for a student to bring the class to them might not be what the teacher expects in the classroom and how to appropriately deal with that. I think it'll be extremely helpful for some teachers uh, that might uh, have a tendency to immediately want to write a referral or you know how to deal with that first. So I think it's excellent training and and I took away a couple of things I thought it's great for anyone and that's to use our words, how we use our words to be helpful, not hurtful, encouraging, not discouraging, and to stop, pause, take a breath before we respond. So mm -hmm. I, I thought it was very, very uh, interesting and it was a, a great, I think it was about an hour long. I think they also did the same training <clears throat> at Boyd and then at Pipkin and they will continue to do that. But we get a chance to attend one of the trainings. So, really so just to clarify what you said, uh, uh, conscious discipline training was just with the staff. And students. And the students mm -hmm. at the same time. Yes. Okay. Because it was virtual training. Okay. Uh, and, they, and it was excellent because the trainer had a former student um, that also assists in the training and they did some role, or you know, some role playing as to how that student responded to the teacher when he walked in her classroom and how she dealt with him and then he had lots of great advice for the students. It was very, very good training. But I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah. And then plus our great ground or ribbon cutting we had a boy That's mm -hmm. right. recently. That's right. Yes. It was I think our biggest turnout yet mm -hmm. to a ribbon cutting. We had literally the whole neighborhood <laughs> midtown neighborhood showed up. <laughs> they showed up. So oh, it, I'm, it was I'm exciting. Another comment. I yes. just, like Denise yeah. missed my opportunity no, a few minutes ago. Huh. I wanted to recognize um, Ashley Bowling who's the art teacher over at Parkview High School. I had a chance to go and see the a mural that was painted by Kababi, an artist um, out of St. Louis. He worked with the students and with uh, Ashley to create the images on there and it was it's just phenomenal i encourage everyone to ha who can to go and see that mural um it, it represents uh the diversity and the values of parkview including uh students there's a student who uh is reading braille in the, the in the in the in the mural as well as a student with a hearing aid and it just represents um the things that the students thought were important as well as uh, representing the school as a whole and it's just beautiful so i encourage people to uh, see it if they can, but also I just wanted to recognize yeah. Ashley Bowling, who's the art teacher there, who has done a phenomenal job in getting a grant to bring Kababi here to do that that mural. That's awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments before moving forward? Okay. All right. That leads us to our plus delta. Um, we're always looking at ways to improve our business meeting, so you can leave those on a sticky note and, and pass those to Tammy um, as we move forward. We do need to go into executive session, and so the recommended action is that the board meets in executive session to discuss audit matters as provided in sections 610.021, subsection 17 of the revised statute of Missouri. Would somebody be willing to make that motion? Charles will make the motion. Is there a second? Danielle will second it. Any discussion? Seeing none, we are ready to vote. Motion passes. That concludes our uh, public business meeting and we will go into executive session. Thank you for joining us.